An off night for Team Gravedigger allowed new contenders to emerge last round. John Gordon led Bad Company to another racing title and looks to continue his winning streak. While Corey Rummel attempts to shine under the bright lights of LA and drive Megalodon to back-to-back -back event championship. This is Stadium Championship Series Blue with round 21 of Monster Jam. SoFi Stadium, just outside of Los Angeles in Inglewood, California, is set to host its first ever Monster Jam event with Stadium Championship Series Blue. Good evening, I'm Leslie Mears alongside Adam and Ticknap, and we are so excited tonight as a new chapter begins in Monster Jam with our first ever event at SoFi Stadium. And last round, John Gordon was so fast. He's really picked up momentum. Can he keep this alive? You know, John Gordon has been on fire lately. Every time he hits the track, he keeps getting faster and faster. John was known for his freestyles, but I'll tell you what, he's getting known for his racing. He has three racing titles this season and two back-to-back -back in stadiums. Tonight, it's gonna be a tough cast. He has Brian Anderson in round one, but he's got great momentum. For sure. So Corey Rommel in Megalodon won his first ever event championship in an epic battle with Bari Musauer. So now he's starting to put some pressure on Bari for third. And for him, you know, he's got to keep this momentum up if he wants to contend for that third place spot. You know, Bari had a great last round, but he was definitely upset that he didn't get that event championship. And he felt like he had a better freestyle run. But in the end, you know, the crowd gave it to Corey. For me, Corey took a big risk right at the right time and he came up with a big win and big event championship points. Now with the series really coming down to Tyler or Ryan taking the championship, you know, Corey has really got to be thinking about, am I going to make it into world finals? Other Megalodon drivers are out there though, so where do you think his focus is in these last few events? You know, Corey has to put the pedal to the metal. There's other drivers, like you said, like Todd LaDuke and Megalodon that also want to make it to world finals. And Corey is pushing and pushing and pushing. But for me, that last event at Glendale, getting that overall championship win, huge vote for him getting into world finals. So we both think that he has the momentum, but we talked to him about how he feels about his opportunities and chances coming down the home stretch. Well, now that I nailed that overall event championship back in Glendale, you know, it's a little monkey off my back because now I know why I got what it takes to go out here and basically compete and basically win against some of these guys. So hopefully I can gain some points and get a few more wins. I'm sitting right now in fourth position in the overall for the year, and I know Barry's just a little bit past me, but, man, there's still four events to go. And starting from this weekend on, I'm pushing this thing all the way, man. It's the final stretch, and I got to get every point that I can. Racing is where we get a lot of our points at just because there's so many rounds, and if you go out the first one you, you don't really get many points at all so I need to be more consistent than that and hopefully maybe get Bari first round so I can take him out and then I move ahead that's how I got to catch him with five other Megalodon trucks competing there's a little bit of a you know pressure because we're all competing to see who can get that Monster Jam World Final spot and I'm really hoping it's gonna be me so we're gonna see what happens so Corey's going to try to go back to back against the other 11 drivers out here. But there is a change. We see Cody Saucier out here in El Toro Loco. What do you expect? You know, this is going to be a big change for Cody, especially coming from arenas all season long. He's a showdown winner and he's won a racing title in the All-Star Challenge. But I'll tell you what, these Stadium Series Blue drivers are in tip top form. And my prediction for Cody is it's going to be a long, hard fought night. We can also expect him to adjust to the truck as well. Let's catch up on the season point standings. Tyler Meninga has a 42-point lead over Ryan Anderson. As we mentioned, Barry Musauer and Corey Rummel fighting it out there for third and fourth, and Cynthia Gauthier rounding out the top five. So drivers will compete tonight in three different competitions, racing the Great Clip Skills Challenge and the Freestyle Competition. 12 points going to the winner of each event, and then we'll tally those up to determine our overall event champion.
With this being the first Monster Jam event at SoFi Stadium, it's also the first time the drivers are experiencing the track and the dirt. Yeah, here in SoFi, especially being here for the first time, you're gonna have a lot of advantages and disadvantages. This stadium, if you perform well here, you can definitely perform well here for the rest of your career. Another added pressure is that you have celebrities and a bunch of media, which means more meet and greet, cameras in your face, which is less time for the drivers to do what they need to do. This dirt here in SoFi is just like Anaheim, so I expect the guys who did good in Anaheim to do well here tonight too. And I'm excited for the new track format as well, which takes us to the bracket for our first competition of the night, which is racing. So Monster Mutt versus Avenger, Bad Company versus Son of a Digger, Thunder Warriors versus Axe, and Grave Digger versus El Toro Loco. You can see Shaker, Zombie, Megalodon, and Lucas Stabilizer with buys. What's our race to watch? I mean, it's got to be Tyler versus Cody in that head-to-head -head matchup. These two had a high-profile race in the World Finals in 2017, where Tyler took the win. So this race is going to be intense. So it's time for that first race of the night, and it's father versus son with Jim Kohler in Avenger against Chris Kohler in Monster Mud. And so Jim has the advantage here with two wins over Chris this season. I love that they're lining up next to each other so they can kind of see each other as they go into that first hairpin turn. Over the roller, evenly paced. It's all going to come down to these hairpin turns at the end, and who can handle them the best? Chris gets it whipped around a little early. I like his chances, but Pops comes back with a little more throttle. It's coming down to the finish. And so it looks like it'll be Avenger with the edge once again. So Jim now a perfect 3-0 against Chris as we take a look at our original Super Glue Glue to the action replay. Jim sets up that corner perfectly. Chris just oversteers, ends up a little too far inside. Jim lines up that finish line just right and comes away with the win. Next up in round one, Adam, it's Ryan Anderson in Son of a Digger against John Gordon in Bad Company. And so these two have faced off eight times this season. Ryan taking the edge, six of those. Nice start for John Gordon. Looks pretty even coming to the first corner, but John Gordon pushes way wide. John's got a big motor, so he's going to try to catch up here. Going into that last turn, hits the turn pod, though. Advantage to Son of a Digger, and Ryan Anderson cruises to the next round. Let's take a look at our original Super Glue Glue to the action replay. John Gordon in the first corner, pushes wide, tried to make up for it, goes a little too far inside here, can't make up the time. Ryan Anderson comes away with the first round win. And his 30th of the season. So in our third race out of Houston, Texas, it's Colt Stevens in Thunder Roarus against Team Screams, Joe Foley in Axe. And it looks like some problems there for Axe off the bat. And so Colt Stevens will automatically advance. A disadvantage, though, he doesn't get a lap in on the track. So this is the pair you told us to watch, our final first round matchup. So we have Tyler Meninga in Gravedigger versus Cody Socie in El Toro Loco. So a little learning curve here for Cody the first weekend that he's going to be in this particular El Toro Loco. Yeah, this is going to be a tough task. Both off to a good start, but let's see. Oh, way too wide by Cody. Two truck links is the advantage there for Tyler, but Cody trying to make it up, slings it a little too deep. And it'll be Gravedigger keeping it nice and tight on those turns to the inside, advancing. Let's take a look at our original Super Glue Glue to the action replay. That was great driving by Cody Socie, especially for his first time out, going up against the leader of the championship, pushes wide in both corners, can't get it done, but Tyler moves on. He also posts the fastest time of round one at a 17.3. 8-1 as we take a look at our bracket for round two and we're seeing some matchups that we also had in Glendale. So the competition is heating up here. So coming up, we've got a long way to go at SoFi as the racing competition is lit. Round two is next on Monster Jam. Welcome back to Inglewood for the second round of racing here. It will be the two-time World Finals freestyle champion Jim Kohler in Avenger going head-to-head -head with Flying Ryan Disharoon in Shaker. It's very interesting, this new race course for these drivers for 18 racing competitions. They've had the same style and now changing it up here at SoFi. Avenger, a slight lead going into the corner. Disharoon deep. 
Man, I'll tell you what, that left lane, they are pushing so deep. Jim knew exactly the lane, and Ryan Disharoon grabs the pawn and flips over. This one's all Jim Kohler. So Disharoon trying to get an edge, cutting that corner short. We'll take another look at it. Turns just a little too tight, grabs the pod, gets up on those BKT tires, ends up on the lid. It can happen so fast. And up next, it's the Monster Jam Wow Factor Award winner, Bari Musauer in Zombie against three-time World Finals champion Ryan Anderson in Son of a Digger. You know, and I'll just tell you, every time I see Ryan Anderson on any kind of tacky dirt, he's so good. Evenly matched so far this year, these two as pretty even going into that first turn. This is impressive. Ryan Anderson, Bari coming into the last corner. Ryan Anderson hits a perfect apex. And that is just enough. And Anderson will advance by a BKT into the next round. Let's take a look at the super glue, glued to the action replay. Ryan Anderson, what an expert move. Pushes a little wider, comes in perfectly apexing that corner. Bari, great corner, but not quite enough to beat Ryan Anderson. Our next race is Corey Rummel in Megalodon versus Colt Stevens in Thunder Roras. And so this is huge for both of these guys. Remember, Corey is trying to vie for another overall event championship and try to get ahead of Bari Musauer in the points as they're battling it out for third place overall. Let's see if Colt pushes wide in this first corner. Megalodon nice and tight. A little spin out there by Thunder Roras. Colt definitely makes up time on the straightaway. Corey locked in. Holy smokes out there. That's a good race for sure. Man, that was a close one. We'll have one. to take a look here at our original Super Glue Glutes the action replay. Look at how close he gets to the pod on the exit. Corey setting up nice and wide. Two great corners from both drivers. Coming down to the finish. Corey Rubble <laughs> gets the win here in Megalodon, and that is huge for his opportunity to advance in the points. So that will take us to the final round two matchup, where we'll see former World Finals high jump champion Cynthia Gauthier in Lucas Stabilizer and the series points leader Tyler Meninga in Gravedigger. And remember, these two faced off against each other in Glendale, and Cynthia took them out. So I know Tyler is looking for revenge here. Wow, what a nice corner by Tyler. He learned from his other opponents, slowed down a little early, kept that corner tight, and he has a truck length advantage coming into the finish line. So Gravedigger will advance here as we take another look. Cynthia, it looks like she just pushes a tiny bit wide in that corner, hits the throttle a little too hard on that finish line turn, giving a big advantage to Tyler. He comes away with another win. So that takes us to our semifinal bracket where we will see Avenger versus Son of a Digger, who, by the way, had the fastest time of the round that last round, and Megalodon versus Gravedigger. So we're down to the final four. Will it be Team Gravedigger or Team Stream coming out on top? Find out next. We're back in Inglewood, California for the racing semifinals. So up first, we're going to see Ryan Anderson and Son of a Digger against Jim Kohler in Avenger. So impressive numbers here for Anderson. It's his 13th semifinal round appearance, and he is 2-1 and one versus Jim Kohler. And in the last 13 races, he's only been outside of the top five two times, so he's really got racing dialed in this season. Jim holding his own right off the start as they go into the turns, but different procedures here. Jim pushes wide, clear advantage to Son of a Digger. Look at how he breaks early, Jim goes wide. So Ryan Anderson easily moving in to our finals here in Son of a Digger. So next up here, we'll see Corey Rummel in Megalodon versus Tyler Meninga in Gravedigger. And remember, this is for an opportunity to advance to the finals. And what we're seeing with our drivers here is that they're really pitching the truck into the corner very, very early to almost slide in backwards to give themselves an edge. Here we go. Let's see how they set the truck. Tyler and Corey with a great first turn. 
pretty even down the stretch. Look how early Tyler pitches the truck. So much earlier than Corey. Oh. Gets him in trouble, though. And how about it? Corey Rummel will advance to the finals. Let's take a look at our original Super Blue Blue to the action replay. That little bit of extra added pressure where Tyler knew that Corey was there made him turn early and grab that pod. So our finals are set and it is exciting. Son of a Digger versus Megalodon. And so another fast time here for Ryan Anderson. So here we go, pulling to the line. There's Anderson, there's Rummel. And remember, it was just a tenth of a second faster than Corey in the semifinals for Ryan Anderson. So he does have a slight advantage. Both off to a good start, but it's gonna be how they set this first corner. Corey comes nice and tight. He's behind though, he's gotta make that up if he wants to get around Ryan Anderson, who pitches it early Ooh. and it's a full truck length win for Ryan Anderson. Ryan Anderson absolutely picture perfect in those last corners. Corey doing everything he can, but not enough to beat Son of a Digger. And how about this time, a 17.017, bad fast. So this is Ryan's sixth racing win, and it gets him the first 12 points of the night as we take a look at our BKT overall point standings here at SoFi Stadium. So next up in Inglewood was the Great Clip Skills Challenge. Drivers could attempt two technical maneuvers on two wheels or opt to do a donut, and each driver was judged by the fans on creativity, skill, and execution. Coming in fifth, Jim Kohler with a huge sky wheeling. That's what we love to see from Jim, getting that thing way up there in SoFi Stadium. Following suit, Colt Stevens, a big sky wheelie, but how about the combo here at the stoppie? Yeah, gets the sky wheelie, truck awareness, grabs a little combo move, getting that stoppie in. In third, it was Shaker's Ryan Disharoon with the popper nose wheelie combo. Ryan Disharoon has just been getting so much better this season. You can tell the control he has with that 12,000 pound truck. Spinning things up a little bit in second, Bari Musauer with a cyclone. Bari getting that donut going. Getting that thing spinning nice and fast. Throwing so much roost in SoFi Stadium. And there come the two tires off the ground. That's what makes it a cyclone <laughs> as he holds on to stop it. And getting the win, it was Tyler Meninga with a nose really moonwalk combo and a huge score. Man, I'll tell you what, this is Tyler Meninga's bread and butter. Look at the way he balances that truck. You can see the skill with the nose wheelie to moonwalk combo. Tyler just hanging up there like it's no big deal at all, getting the win in skill. He makes it look so easy as he picks up his 10th skills win of the season and 12 points to put himself on top of that BKT overall point standings board. Bari Musauer in second, tied with Ryan Anderson right now, Jim Kohler in fourth, and Corey Rummel rounding out the top five. With one competition left, Grave Digger has the lead, but will Tyler Menega stand tall at SoFi? Find out when we come back with more Monster Jam. SoFi Stadium in Englewood, the home of the LA Rams and the Chargers, and it's tonight's home of round 21 of the Monster Jam season. So after two competitions, Tyler Menega is back on top of the leaderboard. And he hasn't been as dominant lately as he was earlier in the season, but still consistent with being the biggest spotlight this series has been all season. So it's fitting that one of the biggest stars in the sports can shine here at the, one of the biggest stadiums. Yes, it seems like tonight it's all lining up for Tyler Menega. The stars are out. We're in one of the biggest, most beautiful stadiums in LA. I'm telling you, we are riding the Hollywood movie story right now. So only five points separate the top five drivers. So the event championship is wide open. And right there in the mix is Jim Kohler, the 26 year veteran, stepping up big with two top five finishes. Yeah, you know what? I think tonight you're seeing Jim Kohler's experience. You're seeing a veteran driver do what he does best. And that's when something's a little bit changed or new. He doesn't worry about it. He's just getting the job done. When the stars are out and the lights are blinding, Jim is showing us he's still a star. 
Yeah, it's been a great night for him. And right now, let's catch you up on the BKT overall point standings entering freestyle. So as I mentioned before, Tyler Meninga on top of that board. Bari Musauer follows along with Ryan Anderson as they are tied right now. Then you see Kohler three away and Rummel rounding out that top five. So here's the freestyle order. We do have some breaking news that might impact the competition. So Ryan Anderson, son of a digger, suffered a broken planetary during the victory lap after racing and then had another planetary lockup in skills. And so they're working very hard to try to get him back into the competition as he sits fifth right now. Gravedigger also had a planetary issue, but he'll be good to go to kick off the competition. So Adam, what are your thoughts on the two planetary gears being replaced right now? You know, I'll tell you what, the last thing you want is a planetary gear going when you have a racing win celebration. And then on top of that, we have another planetary gear during skills. This is an absolute nightmare for Ryan Anderson. We heard down there right now, Everybody is working on the truck from different teams, different drivers trying to get it done right now. Bryce is from UNOH. He's a grad, son of a diggers in good hands. And just to put it in perspective, you're basically going from four wheel drive to three wheel drive and they need all the power that they can to maneuver this track. So that's definitely something to monitor as we kick off freestyle with the current overall event leader, Tyler Menega in Gravedigger. He's got seven freestyle wins leading the series. And he is going to kick it off with a bang. We know he's not going to hold back here. Yeah, he can't hold back. This is such a big advantage going in this number one spot for Tyler. He never gets this. He's always at the back of that freestyle running order. And right now, he can really have that wow factor and show the fans something instantly that they haven't seen all night long. And he could get a huge score. And I think the other important thing is it's going to totally set the tone for the other drivers because they're sitting in the trucks, they're watching, they're seeing his momentum, they're seeing his rhythm, and they know they're going to have to keep pace with that if they're going to contend. Yeah, and you know, we've been watching Tyler this entire season, and it's definitely intimidating for these other drivers to have to go after Tyler Meninga. You can see him right now. He's carrying so much momentum around the track. His throttle rhythm is great. Everything is always good during freestyle with Tyler. And even though he had a slight stutter there, getting a little close to the trucks, he still comes back with that big wow factor and that big jump across the middle. Little smoke coming out of those. Oh, look, nice little two wheel, little skill maneuver there in the metal, out of some variety. And he goes straight into the backflip. Nice backflip, bounces on the BKTs, a little over rotation, but he might have been looking for a combo move there. Going straight for the step up, getting a nice little step up, step down there on that maneuver, and still plenty of time left here in his run. This is kind of what Tyler's always wanted. He likes to get that backflip in the middle of the run, and then he likes to really hammer down at the back half of this freestyle. And he's really taking full advantage. This particular series has had a center pod all year, so you're jumping from the outside to that center pod. Here they have tons of landing space, and he's definitely using all of it to recover the truck to get ready for the next hit out there. And two, I love how he was cross-threading and changing it up. This crowd is definitely on their feet right now. We'll take another look at it here in our original Super Glue Glue to the action replay. He hits the backflip, over-rotates a little bit, maybe misses reverse for the nose wheelie combination moonwalk there. Comes out with a big air onto the flat, gets a good bounce on those BKT tires. Good run for Tyler. So here comes the two-time World Finals Freestyle Champion, Jim Kohler in Avenger. And we just want to note also the score for Tyler Menega to kick off freestyle, a 9.291. So that will be our score to beat after just one competitor. Getting it done tonight. We've talked about it multiple times. He's just so consistent out here. The truck looks good. And I think that this track is really, really set up for gym style. You know, you've got opportunities to really go big, to gather yourself back up without running into anything else. And it kind of lends itself to his style a little bit better out here. Yeah, definitely more open space where you can be heavy on the throttle and kind of not worry about what's happening after the landing of the truck. So launching off the step up, another quick turn, a little figure eight action here on the course. Coming back to the center with some good air. You no know, shortage of that ever in Jim's runs. <laughs> Definitely not. You know, but for Jim right now, 
being Mr. Excitement, I feel like he's, oh, gets it on two, save it, Jim, get that cyclone. Keep going, oh, he just can't save it. As he'll go on the roof here, we'll take another look at it. He gets, just grabs that tacky dirt here in SoFi Stadium, gets up on two BKTs, grabs that cyclone, but just can't turn into it enough to get the truck back on all fours. Yeah, and you saw him really making that move, trying to turn into it to make it pop back up. Gravedigger has the lead, but will it be enough to get Tyler the title? Find out next. Welcome back to round 21 of Monster Jam. Earlier today, thousands of Monster Jam fans entered SoFi Stadium to attend the pit party. For a chance to meet the drivers and see the trucks, visit the pit party at your next Monster Jam. So during the break, freestyle continued with Cody Sosier and El Toro Loco, and you see a very bad bounce there and a rollover just 50 seconds left in the run gets him a 7.696. And then Joe Foley would make his run, but mechanical issues plagued him, and he earned a 7.735. So let's get back to it. With two new planetary gears, here comes Ryan Anderson in Son of a Digger. And so it looks like he is fresh and ready to rock out there in four wheel drive. Absolutely, Ryan Anderson, this is a big moment for him with those two planetary gears going out and that skills challenge not going the way he wanted. He needs a big score to make up as many points as he can on Tyler right now. Yeah, and he really needs to get ahead of him if he's going to do that. And that's what it's coming down to. This is one of three final events for the series where he's trying to vie for that championship, and he needs every single point he can get. Nice air from Ryan. Gets up on two, turns into it. Nice job into a little bit of a cyclone, saves it, and the crowd loves it. Man, he's the king of uh, pulling off that onion maneuver out there and just writing it back up and keep rolling, making it look so easy. Yeah, some about this tacky California dirt Ryan Anderson seems to gel with. Nice throttle control there, a little brake check mid-air to bring it down nice and soft to get ready for the next hit. Working his way outside in, not always following that figure eight pattern, which is a nice little mix up here for Anderson. Ryan Anderson doing a great job carrying momentum. Little cross threading there, hitting the jump sideways, gets on the brakes, almost runs into Tyler. And talk about momentum here in freestyle. Oh no, Leslie. Oh, it's locked up. The back rear is locked up, and that's, that's what we talked about, going to three wheel drive here for him. So what you're gonna see here is you're gonna see him make a lot of left hand turns to compensate for that tire not rotating and putting power to the ground. Come on, Ryan, keep it going. And with what he's got to work with, doing an awesome <laughs> job here, getting that little slap wheelie up. Ryan Anderson, Rolling oh, the there we go. With the problem in the air, that's all you gotta do. <laughs> bicycle to Cyclone and SoFi Stadium's getting loud. What a finale there for Anderson. Let's take a look at our original super glue glued to the action replay. Gets it up on two. Ryan, an expert move, turns right into that tacky dirt, gets that truck back on all four BKT tires. And then the left rear planetary gear is locked up, but it doesn't matter. He puts a bicycle into another cyclone to finish off his run here in freestyle. And to take the lead, which is exactly what he needed to do. So out of Columbus, Michigan, it's Monster Jam rookie Chris Kohler in Monster Mutt. Ooh, a nice little bicycle to start off the run. And I think Chris has really come a long way this season. You know, he, he's picked up a win in each one of the competitions this year. That's meeting the goal that he set for himself. And he seems to just keep raising the bar for himself as the season progresses. Yeah, you know, he's just become a better driver. The truck's gotten better. I'm sure he's working with his dad. He's getting more and more confidence. And tonight, with the stars out at this big stadium with all the media and Monster Butt, huge save! And he just keeps going, great oh, throttle oh. control by Chris Kohler, and he's still rocking this freestyle. Oh, this is gonna be a big score, Leslie. Man, I love this for him. Each bad bounce that he gets, he's able to recover from it effortlessly. <laughs> and when you think the run is over, he just keeps rolling. I'll tell you what, he's the lucky dog tonight. 
A little step up, step down there. Still rocking and rolling out there. Just a little bit of damage to the hood of Monster Mutt. Is that going to impede his vision, though? You're definitely going to have problems with that hood. He needs to try to look left, turn left, see if he can get to this backflip ramp. So great height on it, lands on all four BKTs, reverses out of it, and can he keep going? This dog will not stop here in SoFi Stadium. Nice wheelie. Oh, it looked like I might have seen a right planetary gear locked up. And he does, you're exactly right, Adam, and so, He's got to turn the other way. He's got to turn to the right if he's going to compensate for that. But what he's trying to do is he's trying to unlock it to see if he can get it to freewheel <laughs> as he goes into the donut. There you go, Chris. Just hammer the throttle. He ain't scared. <laughs> no, he's not. Let's take another look here at our original super glue glued to the action replay. <laughs> wow, I had so much fun watching that run. Chris Kohler doing an absolutely amazing job, coming off the back of the step up, getting a bounce, turning it in right here, gets on the side of those BKTs, flips over the front, has truck awareness, throws it into reverse, gets it back kind of on two, then throws it into a wheelie. I can't even call what's going on because there's so much going on right there. So much going on in the truck too, and here's the score, a 9.583, and Chris Kohler, takes the lead. Look how excited Ryan Anderson is. <laughs> so Chris Kohler puts himself on top of the board, but now it's time for this round's action of the week. And we go to Ford Field in Detroit, and it's Mike Christensen in Vendetta during freestyle. Mike hits the backflip, gets a weird toss, and then gets the truck on a BKT sidewall cyclone. Then it flips to the other side. What a move for action of the week by Mike Christensen. You can see from this angle, he gets it on the sidewalls, turns into that thing, knows exactly what he's doing, and the crowd is on their feet. They loved Mike Christensen with this week's Action of the Week. So speaking of action, we have more on the way from SoFile. Freestyle continues next on Monster Jam. We are back with more Stadium Championship Series Blue from Inglewood, California. So moments ago, the freestyle action continued with Ryan Dishroon in Shaker, but he would roll over in the first 30 seconds and would not qualify for a score. Then it was Corey Rummel in Megalodon. He goes for the backflip, but would under-rotate and end up on the hood, earning a score of 6.986. Now it's time for Colt Stevens in Thunder Roris. Colt Stevens definitely getting better and better throughout the season. He started off the run great. I'm really enjoying this new layout that they have for SoFi Stadium specifically. Like we talked about earlier, it's, it's a little more open, giving these drivers a chance to kind of open the truck up, do a couple different moves, and not worry about a bad bounce or two. And I think we've seen a lot more slap wheelies too in competition, which you just saw. Big air here from Colt, great landing, able to gather it up nicely. And I think that that is due to the obstacles kind of being on the outside, having more space to gather themselves up and to complete those maneuvers on the bounce back. Great throttle control there on the step up, swinging it around and coming back for more. Colt getting another nice air. Everything seems to be going well. Nice save by Colt, little side swap from that bounce, but Nothing too crazy. So remember our score to beat right now, a 9.583. That erratic run there from Chris Kohler in Monster Mud as he put himself on top of the board. Nice move there from Cole, getting some big air sideways, mixing it up a little bit. I like too how Colt is not trying to follow that figure eight pattern. Sometimes drivers in freestyle get kind of stuck in that as he goes for the eight pack. Oh, oh my gosh! Come down on the nose, and then he's able to throttle out of it. Man, that had to hurt. Oh my gosh, Ooh. that was a huge backflip off the eight pack. And he just keeps on going here. Big air, round in the corner, one, two punch, going for some more. Woo. That's what we're talking about right there in SoFi Stadium. Huge air running into the side of the backflip ramp. That's a freestyle run. Here's our original super glue glutes, the action replay. Does not get the rotation off the eight pack and goes so high. 
coming down so hard on the front end of that truck. He is going to feel that one tomorrow. Now it's Barry Moosauer's turn as he brings Zombie onto the track here at SoFi. So he's got to take the lead here, and then he would secure that. Barry getting a little sideways on that landing, having to slow down a little bit. And I think we're just seeing the warm up, you know, for Barry. You know, he's definitely got a method to his freestyle where he does like to amp it up as he goes and just get bigger and bigger throughout the timing of this competition. Yeah, no question. I mean, we've talked about it all season with Barry. He's one of the drivers that that does plan out his entire run. And one of the things about planning out your entire run is you kind of start out slow because it's so important to fill that first 30 seconds so you do get a score. So for Bari, right after that 30 second mark, you should see him pep it up a little bit. Yeah, and it's all about getting that out of the way. Nice, beautiful slap wheelie there. We like to see those and those zombie hands fly back. And he said, really, you also have to get the first 30 seconds out of the way, get the backflip, and make the last 30 seconds matter the most. And you've really only got time for two, maybe three hits if the track is compact to make an impression. There you go. Drag there that bumper, buddy. Go. There you go. Nice slap wheelie and good track awareness to be able to hold that slap wheelie for so long. Yeah, definitely talking to his crew chief on the headset telling him, hey, you got to bring it back down. Here he goes, backflip. A little corkscrew Ooh. action there and straight to the sidewall for Zombie. Comes into the backflip ramp. Looks like he's still turning as he comes in. That's why he kind of gets that corkscrew rotation, lands on the sidewall. No suspension to take that impact. So with that run, he moves into fifth place overall. Monster Mutt still has the lead with Son of a Digger and Grave Digger in second and third, and Thunder Roarus currently in fourth. So just two more remain in freestyle. It's Bad Company and Lucas Stabilizer next. Welcome back to SoFi Stadium. And before we get back to the action, let's take one more look at the BKT overall event leaderboard coming in to freestyle. Tyler Meninga on top. Bari and Ryan tied for second, Kohler third, and Corey Rummel rounding out that top five. So it's time for more freestyle. Up next, John Gordon, Bad Company. We've seen some lower scores, although they've been in the eights and great runs out there since that run of Monster Mutt, but it leaves the door wide open for him to put that big wow factor out there to earn that big score. There was those big wow moments kind of earlier in the freestyle run. Nice slap wheelie from John Gordon, but yeah, you have big wow moments in earlier in those freestyle runs, but a little bit dead in between. So he definitely has an opportunity to get this crowd back on its feet. Nudges that race lane there in the middle, round in the corner. You know, and another thing about John Gordon tonight, too, is he's coming off two racing wins in a row, and then he comes out here and gets eliminated first round in racing. So I'm sure he definitely wants to step up in freestyle and end his night on a good note. Yeah, and he prides himself on being a true racer, so you know that that put a little more fuel to the fire there to get him going a little bit harder here during this freestyle competition. I like the combo moves off the ramps. He's getting some big air and then slapping it up and working on two wheels out here. That's gonna bode well with our fans. Oh, little brake check right there. Noses over nicely on that landing. I think he had something else in mind for the land and the turn here. John Gordon with good momentum in this freestyle run, definitely stepping up his game here in freestyle. He's going to have to go pretty big if he's going to contend. Remember, our score to beat a 9.583 so far. Monster Mutt still on top of the board for freestyle. Yeah, this hasn't been a Monster Mutt-esque run. It's a solid run, but he's going to have to do something spectacular. So here we go. This could be the wow moment that he needs as he lines up for the backflip. It's all about landing it and what you can do next. Oh, a little pogo action. It looks like he might have got a tie rod there when those front two tires came down. And this is the exact same side where Corey had problems. John picking that side, under rotates, lands right on the front of the truck. That is definitely going to hurt. So our final competitor 
in freestyle will be Cynthia Gautier in Lucas Stabilizer. And, you know, she set a goal of really, you know, proving herself in this truck and making a name for herself. And she's definitely done that in freestyle. She's got four competition wins this season, tied with Ryan Anderson, the only one above them, Tyler Meninga, as well as eight podiums in freestyle, really proving she can hold her own. Yeah, she can definitely hold her own, especially in this last place spot. She is not new to winning freestyle. And something that I think definitely caters to Cynthia is this more open track. She throws caution to the wind, and she is heavy on the throttle. For sure. And a little extra added pressure is, you know, she got to hang out with some celebrities. we got the mom squad out there, Beverly Mitchell, Jessica Beal, Kristen Bell. Heck, she even helped her learn how to drive the truck out here. So she's trying to uh, do it for them tonight, too. Heck, yeah, you got to love that added support. I love how she's sending it out there, getting that nice big air and setting herself up for that nice slap wheelie. And nice turn, good truck awareness and track awareness by Cynthia right there by getting that thing settled down and turned around before she had to throw it in reverse. Working her way around the track, getting that 30 seconds in. Safe to say she's good for now. Monster Mutt still on top. Those big score to beat out there. And let's see what she's got here for our wow factor. Lining it up perfectly. Nice rotation, great check to bring it around, but she works screws as well and can't right the truck on all four BKTs. Here's our original super glue glued to the action replay. Comes up to the backflip ramp. Looks like she just hits it a little crooked. Cork screws in the air, lands on the side of those BKT tires, and man, that was a rough hit. So that will do it for freestyle. Chris Kohler gets a second freestyle win of the season, followed by Anderson, Meninga, Stevens, and Gordon. So Chris gets those 12 points with the win as we check out our final overall point standings board here at SoFi Stadium. So it's Tyler Meninga edging out Ryan Anderson by just one point. And we'll check in with our winner. Yeah, so racing was good. Uh, honestly, I was feeling really comfortable in the lane that nobody liked. And so what was happening with me is I was turning that last corner and pitching it in just right, and it got me on that pass against uh, Corey Rummel. So I hit that turn pod, rolled over, didn't uh, work out in my favor on that. Going into two wheel, I knew I was down uh, points. I was, you know, I don't know how many points back, but uh, what I do is, I, you know, I kind of just be calm about it. I don't think about the points. I just go out, do what I know, score is good, and uh, it did. We won two wheels, so that worked out awesome as well. Freestyle, I have mixed feelings about. I was first out, so it's going to be tough to get a good score. I knew how to run hard, and I did run hard. It, it worked out, right? But, I mean, me personally, I could have been a bigger fan of a, of a more rugged freestyle. Plenty ahead of Ryan right now. I'm over an event ahead of Ryan, but that doesn't mean anything. I could blow an engine in intros Salt Lake City next week. So it's never in the bag until it's in the bag. So I'm just going to, I'm staying calm, cool, and collected, doing what I need to do in the truck and uh, having confidence that Matt's doing what he needs to do outside of the truck. And uh, we've made a great team this year. So it's really been working out awesome. Tyler Menem will get a chance to clinch the series championship when we head to Rice Eccles Stadium in Salt Lake City. You don't want to miss it. For Adam and Knapp, I'm Leslie Mears. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you right here next time on Monster Jam.